Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. I hate saying this song, so I'm not going to do it. Oh, yeah. Hi there. How are you? It's Alex. And it's the, uh, it's the ramble. Uh, uh, we were supposed to have Marjorie in here, uh, but she's uh, not coming in tonight because I didn't know up until the last moment whether I really wanted to do a show or not. And so she took her sleeping pills, and uh, when I finally said, are you coming in, she says, I took my pills already. So uh, we, uh, she, she was going to appear, so I guess she wants to wish you all a happy holiday, so you can have it. I, I have, I'm just in the worst possible mood, uh, and uh, I don't know if I want to really do a show tonight. Uh, I, you know... I, I'm tired of uh, just uh, things that happen in life, you know, and uh, things which I have no control over but have control over me. Um, let me explain something, uh, and that is that I um, uh, ordered uh, this, uh, this thing, this, uh, uh, what do you call it? The, what do you, the network of... <laughs> It's a bunch of it's put a bunch of hard drives in it and you got a network, okay? I, I don't know what you call the damn thing—a server, a network server, or whatever. And I ordered it and uh, put it on American Express and then use the uh, rewards uh, points to get the um, to get the thing for free. And uh, uh, it, 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 they they sent it to me. Well, this was by a third party, not Amazon, uh, but through Amazon but a third party. And um, they sent it using what's called UPS Choice. Now, I, I like it when they use UPS because I hate the, tel the uh, post office. I absolutely abhor the post office, okay? Um, and uh, I, I, I have told uh, Amazon never to send anything by the post office. And they agreed. And I, have, I get all my packages through UPS. Well, this company sends it using UPS Choice. Well, what UPS Choice is, is you send it UPS, okay? And it goes across the country on UPS. And then when it gets here, instead of going to UPS, it goes to a post office. And it said today that it was supposed to be delivered today, right? And uh, did it get delivered today? Well, if you go online, it says it was delivered today. But you couldn't prove it by me because it's not anywhere in my apartment house. It isn't in any of the other buildings or their lobbies. And I walked up and down the stairs in the apartment building to see if it was in front of anybody's door, and it wasn't. But it said delivered at like 545 this afternoon. So I, um, I call up Amazon, I said, this was happening. They said, well, we have to get a hold of the company that we did business with that shipped it because Amazon didn't ship it. So she got a hold of them, put me online with them, and they told me, oh, whoopsie, whoopsie, whoopsie. Uh, sorry to hear that that happened. And I said, so am I. Um, and they said to me, well, we don't know. You know, we could send you a new one right now. But here's what happens. Uh, we find that the post office, in a lot of cases, um, sends these things um, by, uh, uh, you know, how do how they put it? Let me, let me see if I can get this straight. I'm trying to do two things at the same time here. Uh, uh, they said that uh, the post office, sometimes they've had it where they have actually said it was delivered and it wasn't delivered, but it was put on the truck or somebody said it was delivered, even though it hadn't officially been delivered, and that I should wait at least a day or two to make sure it doesn't just show up at my front door. 
uh, because it, 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 they probably still have it, and they probably just listed it as delivered. Um, now, the only other problem is I went online to their, to their thing, and they say, well, there are only six left in stock. But they told me if I call them Monday, they can ship me a new one. So I hope they'll have enough in stock to ship me a new one. Oh, boy. Uh, it's terrible, you know. And uh, I, I just, you know, when, you, when you're expecting something and it doesn't come, you get, you get upset by it. I do. I'm, I, I get very upset by this sort of thing. And... Um, it just, uh, and it's that fucking post office department who I don't ever want to do business with, but somehow I'm, even, I'm forced to do business with them anyway. And the post office in our neck of the woods is so inefficient, so bad, you know. Uh, I mean, I'll be here, and they leave a message saying, we tried to deliver it, but you weren't here. What do you mean? Did you ring the doorbell? Did you ring up here? Did you, you know, did you even try? No, they didn't try, you know. So I, that is, you know, that just set me off. And then my girlfriend said, well, you're going to do a show tonight? And I said, I don't feel like doing a show tonight, which I didn't, uh, you know. I was, I've been in too, too bad a, a way with this thing to do a show so I was just not going to do a show at all and then she said well let me know before uh, I take my pills and I told her like five minutes of hey are you going to come in here and she said I took my pills already so now I don't have her as a guest or anything like that and she's probably pissed at me but be that as it may so I I, I have toyed around with something today uh, through all of this because all of this stuff just frustrates the shit out of me, okay? And it frustrates me because of the inefficiency of it. And I'm also worried that, A, they're not going to have another one of these if this one actually doesn't show up because it says only six left in stock. And secondly, if they return my money on my American Express, do I get my reward points back? I would imagine I do. Okay, but uh, we'll have to we'll have to see if I do or if I don't. Uh, but anyway, so I I just um, you know I'm just so out of it. So anyway, I I started thinking about it, and I I I I said to myself, why why am I doing this every night? You know, why am I doing this futile thing that I do for a couple of hundred people to listen to? Um, it used to be more, but as, you know, podcasts have become a drain on the internet, there are 30,000 podcasts. It becomes harder and harder to get an audience that's your own, uh, unless you have a big publicity wagon going behind you, you know. If suddenly I won the lottery and I got myself hundred million dollars I suppose I would take a million dollars pay somebody to publicize this and then we'd have tens of thousands of people watching but I don't have that kind of money and I figure why did I do this well I did this because this is what I do this is my my thing uh, and uh, I do it because it allows me to keep my chops up and so on but more and more it becomes a frustrating experience and with a day like today where I didn't even feel like coming on and doing a show because I was just so frustrated by something that had nothing to do with this show, I began to think about why do I do the show anyway? And I've thought about, about it, and I am on the verge of saying that I am going to retire, uh, that I'm going to stop doing this. Um, and uh, I won't know till I get back in uh, in January whether I'm going to whether I'm going to continue doing it or not. Gabnet will still exist if these guys want to still do their programs. They're more than welcome to, but I'm seriously considering just saying, hey, maybe it's time to retire. You know, maybe it's time to say, hey, it was a great run uh, in my career, and and this is what it's become. It's got down to 200 fucking people, and that's it. You know. Uh, plus, uh, I don't like being a podcast. 
And I'll tell you why I don't, because there are so many of those fucking podcasts out there that I don't know whether I want to continue uh, to do this sort of thing because uh, having a podcast ain't no big deal. Anybody can have a podcast, literally. You know, people go, oh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm starting a podcast. Well, I mean, they're not doing a good one, but they're doing a podcast. And the people, you know, what happens is I've been sitting here knocking my brains against the wall for years doing podcasts, all right? Meanwhile, NBC comes along and goes, oh, well, we'll have, uh, uh, what's her name? Uh, their, their nighttime host, uh, you know, the lesbian, whatever her name is. Uh, well, we, she'll do a podcast now. And uh, we'll have other people. Al Roker will have a podcast. And you go, well, how, how do I compete against that? Because now... It's just they're moving their whole stage from television to podcasting. And just like I, as a little radio station out in the hinterlands, couldn't compete with NBC, the big network, uh, the same is true of me doing a podcast. There is no, we, we'd like to think there's a great equality in podcasting, that anybody can be a hit if they just have the right idea. But it ain't true. It just isn't true, you know? I think when we started uh, this outfit, uh, GabNet, and we came up with the idea of the citizen panel, that we had a rather unique uh, way of doing a talk show. Uh, and, uh, you know, it, it just, it's like, it's not, uh, it's not worth it to me anymore, you know? And uh, it's, it, and, and I'm, I'm, you know, I, I, absolutely thank everyone who has been a member of our citizen panels and so on and believed in this process and uh, I wish there were a way I could justify to myself to keep on doing it uh, but you know uh, I'm not saying that I made a final decision about this but it, you know it's kind of kind of close uh, you know, it's the end of the year. We come back on uh, January second. We'll be off for a month, for a couple, for about a week and a half. And uh, I, you'll never know whether I got my thing in the mail or not. You know, because uh, uh, we're off for the next uh, week and a half. And uh, then when we come back, maybe I won't. Maybe I'll just say that's it. You know, um, I, I'm I'm retiring. Uh, and uh, what, what what else will I do? Uh, maybe I'll find something to do. You know, maybe I'll do little short things here and there or whatever. But, I, you know, I haven't made a final decision about this, but I'm certainly thinking about it. And, and a lot of it may just be the frustration with this whole thing with the fucking post office, uh, who uh, is an anachronism in and of themselves. Uh, and and I, I just, you know, I just wish that the post office were like it used to be you used to count on the post office and it used to earn that respect and now they don't give a shit they really don't give a goddamn shit uh and um so it it then puts me into a depression which i shouldn't go into uh, because I was supposed to get something. Now I don't know. Am I going to lose my American Express rewards points if, let's say, they say, okay, we're giving you back your money and we're canceling out the card thing, you know, the card you use? Or am I going to be able to uh, still use those? Will, they, will the rewards points go back on my account as well? I don't know. Uh, you know, if, if that happens, I, I actually will lose $289. Technically, because I have that money. So I don't know, you know, and so I worry about that. I worry about the fact that, uh, yeah, they can send me a new one, and they said, uh, if you don't get it by Monday, let us know. But then it says they only have six of them left. Suppose they sell all of them over the weekend, uh, and there aren't any left. Well, well who, who knows? But all I know is that it just drove me crazy, just drove me nuts. And and it's not the first time the post office has driven me nuts on something like this. Every time I see that the post office is going to have to deliver something, I go, here we go. 
it's going to fuck up. And let's say it does come tomorrow. It's still fucked up because it says there it's been delivered. And it hasn't been. And maybe they, somebody just pressed the button saying delivered when it went on the truck. Okay? And maybe it's on the truck and it'll be delivered tomorrow. But is that any way to run a business? And let's face it, the post office is a business. The post office doesn't, doesn't uh, get its uh, money for operation from the federal government. There's nothing in the budget for it. It is a self... Uh, um, supporting, self-financing organization. Uh, and uh, to think that, uh, that they do business this badly is amazing to me. You know, I, I find, for instance, the best of them is, is UPS. The UPS has always been, for the most part, pretty damn good. I've, I've had a few problems from time to time. FedEx, not as much, but close. Uh, but the post office, my God, somebody help me. They have one other that Amazon uses. If you order one day, they send it by, I can't remember the name of it now, but it's a, it's a different company. And it, uh, it's, um, hmm. it's, uh, it's a different company. Uh, I can't remember the name of it. Uh, but they're terrible. In fact, one of the, the drivers once threatened me because he wouldn't come in and deliver the box into the building. He wanted to leave it at the gate outside where anybody walking by could take the box. So I yelled at him. I said, you know, you couldn't ring the fucking doorbell, you know, because I was, got, went down there. And, uh, uh, and I, he then got out of his truck and threatened me physically. And I called uh, uh, Amazon. I said, you know, one of, your, one of your delivery people just threatened me physically. And I don't know whatever happened to the whole complaint. And I'm trying to remember what company that was. It has a something, something, I don't know. I won't even try to remember now. But I tell them, UPS, that's all. I, if you can't send it by UPS, then don't send it at all, you know. But. This was a third party. And they send UPS, but then the last leg of it is the post office, and that's where the problem occurs. So, and by the way, down in my basement, down in the foyer, I went down the foyer several times, the lobby of our building, uh, to look uh, because the packages are piling up down there. In spite of the fact there's a sign saying, do not leave packages here, take them to their apartments. And yet they just, the post office, only the post office comes and drops them in the lobby. It's a kind of a giant fuck you to the signs. So that's one other thing with the, with the, with the, uh, with them. So anyway, uh, I don't know. Right now, I don't want to, I don't want to come back and do shows anymore after the first of the year. Uh, uh, but I'll probably wind up being here after the first of the year doing shows. Or I may limit how many I do a week, uh, but I'm just I'm just frustrated by the whole damn thing. You know, it it's just hasn't been there hasn't been a growth in what we're doing, and there's even been a diminishing in what we're doing. Uh, if I do come back, I'll do the show here, but I'm not going to put it up on Facebook. I'll run it on YouTube uh, live, okay? Um, but uh, I, I, except for the fact that it automatically posts the show, I don't think I will post the show. What is this? Oh, oh, some program is downloading itself right now, even as we speak on my, uh, yeah, well, okay, fine. Anyway, it, it downloaded uh, something, but it isn't hurting our, our transmission here. Uh, but I, I think I may, I may even stop the whole Facebook page or at least posting any more to the Facebook page because I said last night, uh, I think Facebook is kind of dangerous uh, to you and to the people who are my 500 friends who I don't know. Um, but uh, anyway, I just, 
Oh, by the way, I have a friend. I won't say who he is. Uh, who who uh, was suspended because of some Me Too stuff. It wasn't Me Too stuff, actually. It wasn't re- regarding coming on to women or anything, but just some inappropriate remarks he made three years ago, right? But nothing, if I, t- I t- told you who he was and what it was, you would go, what? You know. But today he got word that CBS um, is firing him with, uh, without cause, okay? Which means he's going to have to sue to get about a year's worth of money out of them. But uh, I, I thought about it and I went, what a lousy fucking group of people CBS is. You know, they had this whole thing happen, you know, what, hit them laying him off like, Five months ago, something like that. And uh, they waited till right now, just before Christmas, to fire him. Wow, that's Scrooge in action. So don't ever watch CBS again, except for the Big Bang Theory. Maybe Mom. Young Sheldon's pretty good. But otherwise, there's no reason to watch CBS, okay? Fuck them. And Colbert isn't funny, and you know it doesn't doesn't matter. You don't need CBS; they're old. They're old media anyway. Okay. Oh, I know, I know. If uh, if uh, um, uh, Damien is listening, he's going, yeah, but they got Star Trek on there. Yeah, well, so you know, big deal. So go online, download the torrents, and tell them to go fuck themselves. <laughs> That's what happens. Okay. Well, listen. I'm gonna I'm gonna turn on the, uh, the the lines here. I don't know if I can go the whole hour and a half that's left, but we'll see. Um, okay. I just opened up, and uh, people are uh, uh, trying to get in. I guess I don't know. I don't know if anybody's trying to get in or anybody cares about getting in. Um, but we'll just sit here and wait until the uh, until the phone rings. Or the Skype rings. Excuse me, I use an old terminology. Yeah. I, you know, I still call a refrigerator an icebox. Yeah, because that's what my parents called it. So, yeah. Ah, here's Richard Johansson, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, he's, uh, are you there, Richard? Yes, I'm here. Yeah, I, I'd show you his picture, but we don't have his picture. No. Yeah, yeah. So not- you you still in Thailand? Yeah. I'm in Bangkok. Hello from Bangkok. Yeah. What What's good about what Bangkok? What's good about Bangkok? Yeah. Uh, a bunch of things. Uh, I like you know I like big cities. Yeah. And it, you know you got your you got your you you're you're listening yeah. to your browser. Yeah. Turn that I, off, otherwise it's going to confuse you. I know, you. but I got it's it's another thing here. Uh, I got I got. I got a, one of the guys that works here to help me out. Yeah, yeah. He, he, couldn't, he couldn't find it out either. So it's something about game. It's a gaming machine. Yeah, but I'm um, I'm saying that we hear the audio from the show in the background. So you, I I got I got to hang up on you because we can't we okay. can't have that okay. going. Okay. But thanks for calling. All right. Uh, I I just you know. Can't put up with that, yeah, especially in my mood. I can't put up with that. Uh, hello to Charles Wallace. Charlie is there. Um, yeah. Yep. Hi. Turn on your camera. So oh. So we can see your, your face. Your face. There we go. There's the people it's now. Awesome. Wait a minute. Are you there? Um. Uh, oh, there we I go. Uh, okay. Yeah. There we go. There. There's Charles. There. There's his lovely little face. How are y'all doing tonight, everybody? Mm, yeah, it's lovely just day. And what might turn out to be the last show of my career? <laughs> well, I got back to here. Time, huh? Yeah, we're here for it. You know. Yeah. Uh, whatever decision you make, you'll be supported by your friends. Yeah. Well. You know. And you know what? Uh, they have to return the points. American Express would never uh, 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 allow. Uh, a vendor to uh, take your points and not return them. Yeah, well, no, it, it goes with the card being used. So I guess if they say, well, we're returning the money to the card, 
then they return the rewards <laughs> points to the card. But, sure, exactly. But uh, I, I agree with you on that. I'm sure this will probably come tomorrow. I'm, oh, they're almost betting on it. They're saying they've had this happen a lot of times with the post office, where somehow mm -hmm. somebody says hey, it's been delivered, and it never was delivered, and then it comes the next day. And you know they were gonna, they could have done something today, but they decided they didn't want to because they wanted to see if it would come or not. So. But now there are only six yeah. of them left, so by the time on Monday I call them when they're open again, they might be sold out. And then what do I do? They'll they'll get more. They'll get you more. Know. I'm not sure. <laughs> it, I'm, I'm, it's not a rarity. It's, so uh, why, you know, they make them. Yeah. Give me a good reason why I should keep doing this show. Uh, because you like to. Uh, well, no way. And, 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 you know, and also if you didn't, your your wife would probably kill you. She's <laughs> going to kill me anyway because I had a, we had a big I was in a bad mood tonight and uh, she so she didn't. You come were in on. a bad mood over nothing. It's a piece of a, a piece of no. metal. No, 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 no. I'm no, probably plastic. No, that's that's not what I'm mad about. I'm mad yeah. about the post office. This has post happened post. continually, continually uh, over the so last. So you like Don Quixote? You're going to wave at windmills? <laughs> you know? Oh, well, Just, wait a minute. Hold on a, Hold on a second. Hold on a second. You want the it's best. Disappointing. You want the best you know. part of this. So I maybe I yeah, want sure. maybe I want to write the post office and tell them what happened, and and oh say, they're they're going to listen. Wait, wait a minute. Well, I, but I want to <laughs> no. let's say I want to write them and tell them what happened and complain. Have, make a complaint. Try try and find a place to make a complaint to the post office online. There is no uh, way you can do it. You can Skype them. No, you can't. I'm only, I'm only kidding. <laughs> and it's almost as bad with UPS. You know, all they want to talk about. Hey. Is, nobody, you know, when they say, what is your, it, what, what do you want to write us about? There's nobody, nothing that says, uh, says complaint there. They, they there's figure, oftentimes <clears throat> there's a contact number and you can get through oh, to oh, them yeah, that way. Uh -huh. But I, I, uh, I, on the post office, there's uh, someone called a Postal inspector post, or post something, something, the uh, you know, the head postmaster, postal guy. Postmaster. And you can get a hold of those guys. They'll actually postmaster. Talk to you. Postmaster. postmaster. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and we used to have somebody who called the show that actually worked for the post office and he right. was uh, some muck amuck. It'd be nice if he called in and, and told you what to do. Right. And there's nobody listening to this anymore. So, you know, it doesn't matter. Uh, you'd be surprised. Yeah. I, I think you could go right over to the post office and. Well, I mean, yeah, I uh, oh, oh, one day, oh, oh, one day I did. I went to the local yeah. post office here, and I said, "I want to see the person who runs the post office." And then I told them what my complaint was, and they got very nasty with me. <laughs> they got very, yeah. But, well, because I, I said to her, I said, "The trouble with you people is," and she happened to be black, and she said, "What do you mean by you people?" And I said, "It's nothing racial. I mean you people, you postal people." You know, well, it, you could have gone postal. You should have said, I'm expecting my AK 47 in the mail. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. You yeah. bring a gun with you. You should have. Yeah, I mean, but I mean, you can see why these guys shoot the place up. Yeah, but you know, fuck it. I just, I, you know, I just, uh, you know, so, uh, but uh, give me a, a better reason why I should keep doing this. You don't have to have a reason. You know, either you, you want to do it or you don't. And if you don't, yeah, that's okay. That's, that's bottom line. Yeah, I guess. I'll have to figure that you out. You know, maybe maybe what you need is a break. Or maybe what you need is to cut yeah. it down to one, once a week. You know, just, just to, you know, keep your fingers in it. If you're going to have the network going, cut yourself down to once a week. Yeah, 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 yeah. But when I see who, who, who does well on the Internet, I go, What? <laughs> you know, but you, yeah. what you can't compare yourself to other people. Yeah. You know, that's well, like saying mine's bigger than your yours. I know, because I I don't give makeup hints. Well, right. you know, a lot of these people they get followers, they they market, they you know, it's their full time job. Uh, they're using clickbait. They're doing all sorts of things to in, in order to do it. I don't think that you want to invest that kind of time and effort. And you know. You, it's okay. You, yeah. you know, you got yeah. what you got. Yeah. Yeah. Hello uh, to Rob and hello to Charlene and hello to Jason. Uh, they, they've joined hello. us tonight uh, 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 to see the uh, the dying of Alex Bennett. Anyway, uh, uh, yes. Uh, Alex? Yes, uh, Charlene. 
you were talking about, you know, the people that are on YouTube. Now, um, have you heard about, I forget, I think he's like a billionaire. I don't know how many billion. But there's a little boy, and I forget the age, but he's very young. He just opens toys. And he's like, a, you know, like a phenomenon. He doesn't make YouTube. billions, but he does make millions. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, you know, he, just, he doesn't even play with them, I heard. He just opens the toys. And, like, all the toy people just send him toys because, well, you know, well, that's, that's a whole, how they that, have That's a whole new right? thing on the Internet is unboxing. <laughs> yeah. So, unboxing. Well, yeah. By the way, there's you Brian, unbox there's, there's Brian Ludwig. Did you lose your job, Brian? Hi, Brian. Uh, you might be muted. I think he's muted. Oh, can't hear him. He's doing thing. something. Yeah. I don't know. It's something. What what's that thing? A, a taser? <laughs> In your hand, Brian? Can you hear us? Brian? Yeah. Oh, okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, can hear you. Yeah. So what what happened? You, you lost the job already? <laughs> what? You said you weren't going to be able I to quit. Call. You you quit? Oh, jeez. Oh, really? Wow. Yep. Why'd you quit? Were you driving or uh, what were you doing? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, seriously, have you tried being an Uber driver yet? Yeah, he did. He said. Oh, did you? Yeah, but uh, no benefits, no benefits to be had at all, no matter how long you work for this place. Really? Uh, not even any paid, not even any paid time off. Oh, really? And uh, my uh, uh, three days in, four days in, my uh, work ethic is already being critiqued. Fuck you. Goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you, you don't critique somebody's work ethic when you don't have, like, uh, days off for them or holiday or paid vacations or... Uh, and everyone's uh, everyone's regarded as an independent contractor as well, so you're responsible for your own taxes, but yet everybody's expected to be there as though they're on a full-time status. Well, you know, they, you could, know, they could be taken to court. As a, a carpet layer? Yeah. As a uh, independent <laughs> contractor, they don't have the right to critique your work. They either use you or they don't. You know, uh, they, they can't, as an independent contractor, they can't even tell you when to work and when not to work, uh, you know, you could and, almost, and you violates could, the independent contractor there, right? status. You could almost argue, you could almost argue that those, people, those yes. people are calling you a contractor so they can get away with stuff, but that they yeah. don't, yep. that they, yeah. that they yeah. don't fit the profile of what you have to be right. to be a, pro, there, there, uh, there's, have contractors. There's 22 points that you must meet to be a contractor, uh, uh, an independent contractor. And if uh, any of them aren't covered, then you're an employee and they should be withholding taxes and doing all that stuff. Yeah, and, the, yeah. and at that point, they have all the right in the world to critique. So you can get I told them they owe me four days of the time that I've uh, served, that I've uh, served for them. Otherwise, I will take legal action. I emailed the owner of this place and, and told him this i also told him beforehand that uh, how can you justify doing this it's not like it's a sustainable business model of course he gave me a general reply oh i'm so sorry things didn't work out for you but then i said i followed that up you know pissed off that i was either you pay me back my four you pay me my four days in the next week or two or i will take i will take legal uh, action good. why don't you we'll just go to the sorry. brian go to the labor board i'm sure there's a state uh, labor board uh, and uh, oh, say bull, that you were bull, mis uh, mis uh, categorized yeah. as an as a independent contractor when you should have been treated as an employee. So not you, only be you responsible were required, for you your were taxes, <clears throat> yeah. he'll be responsible for his taxes. Yeah, you were you were required to do certain things, and that doesn't make you a contractor. A contractor comes in and provides a service. Right. You get yeah. what I'm saying. You simply mm -hmm. were providing your body, and they were telling you what the service was. You know, yeah. so I think there's so a good argument there that they're using this as a ruse so they don't have to pay taxes. You know, right? And they yeah. and they'll be on the hook, uh, big time. So if you tell the guy that you're going to go to the labor board and uh, complain that you were mis uh, uh, mis uh, set up as a categorized as yeah. a contractor and you should have been an didn't a, they have this problem? Didn't they have this problem with Uber? Uh, yeah, but they found some way to get around it. But Uber's got a lot more money than, uh, it sounds like, than what Brian was working with. Hey, one thing I found out today, today uh, uh, Jason? Yeah. One thing I found out today, I didn't realize how much money Gilbert Godfrey had. I heard he bought a controlling interest in you, and, uh, 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 was it Uber? Wow, He's going to really? change the name to Juber. 
He's got a uh, Toyota Prius, and uh, he's he's going to start picking up pass- passengers. <laughs> Whatever, wherever you read that, it had to be you, a joke. You missed, you, I just invented it. Oh, man. you invented it. Joke. I see. Juber. Oh. Hey, yeah. if you let I that ba- beard go a little bit further, we'll think you're a jihadi. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to get the same color, match the same color as your hair, Phil. Oh, thank you. I, you know, <laughs> imitation's the uh, biggest form of flattery. Form of flattery. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but anyway, so um, uh, uh, yeah, so well. Anyway, we're glad you're back with us. But I'd be better if you had a job, uh, Brian. Yeah. You know, but you know, I'm sure there are other people who will need a driver and treat you decently. Was that the Oregon thing, or no? Or that was after. Oh, that was this was after that. Yeah, that, that was those are the days when he was an Oregon grinder. I think. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, this is a company called uh, Dedicated Logistics Partners. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Did you ever think about... Based out of Allentown, Pennsylvania. Hmm. you ever think about doing actual trucking or something where you drive one of those big trucks, you know? I have. It's not yeah. that great. You know, is oh, Pennsylvania I'll tell you, at will? Uh, people that I know who are truckers, Rob, I think, will agree with me on this, uh, usually always say how they love the work. Ask Kevin. Kevin was a trucker. Yeah. You have to... You have to love the road. There are people that just love to be on the road. I've met truckers like that. Yeah. But a lot of times the guys now who are making the big money, when you start off, you're going to be having, or hauling uh, heavy loads like steel and stuff like that, and it's you know scary as hell. <laughs> yeah. I knew a guy that used to haul chemicals. You know, He'd pull up to like a, a Union Carbide or one of those places, and they'd fill up his big tanker with uh, some sort of chemical that you didn't want to touch, and then he'd drive it to some other place. He was making pretty good money back and forth to L.A. and <clears throat> Bay Area. Yeah. But if he hits a pothole wrong, the whole thing goes... <clears throat> then you got nothing to worry about. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know... I... Or if a dispatcher pushes him too hard and he follows, and he follows the advice of said uh, unscrupulous dispatcher, he crashes and there goes his career. Yeah. Well, don't they have laws now? You can only drive so many hours if you're alone. And uh, yeah, it's been like uh, that forever, though. Yeah. It's been like that forever, and they've revised it over over time. But still, there's... did you ever try driving for a local hauler? You know, like a local retailer who you know, like Meyer. I know you guys don't have well, Meyer in Pennsylvania. That's what you I know, would but, like. You know, get somebody who's a local hauler. You know, just maybe drive within the state or two states or something. <laughs> Yeah, or, or I would do, like to. You know, I've been look, I've been putting myself out there, but you know, I mean, Uber isn't a bad idea. You know, especially. It, it, yeah, it, I I don't like Uber. I think they're a criminal enterprise. To be honest with you. Well, yeah, but that doesn't mean that they won't make you money. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Most criminal enterprises do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think maybe a lot of people that drive for yeah. Uber, it's just extra money. It's not something you can make a living on. Oh, Most no, of them no, do it on a part-time make... basis, but even those that do it on a part-time basis, such as in Connecticut, they're on strike yeah. still, Yeah. as uh, I'm sure Jeff here can test. Jeff? So that means you can't uh, get an Uber in Connecticut? I don't know. Can you get an Uber know. in Connecticut, Says Jeff? they're on strike. It's a good no, question. Not. Well, wait a minute. Jeff's is there Jeff, can Jeff, can Jeff has his hand up. Jeff has his hand up. Yes, Jeff. Yeah. You know, I don't often like to tell people what to do, but but you're a special character, so I'll tell you what my experience has been. And I was kind of like the same kind of person like you who uh, had difficulties in having bosses and uh, and didn't exactly uh, agree with the organization and things like that. And I ultimately ended up starting my own business. Mm-hmm. And you might want to think that yourself. Uh, and, you know, I've been telling Alex this for a long time, and I'll tell you now. You have a future in floor covering sales. <laughs> <laughs> I, I tell it to everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, sure. Mostly funny. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, but uh, I'm. Uh, what can I do if I don't do this anymore? What can I do? What kind of job am I going to be? Would I be good for? Well, to begin with, like nobody would hire me. Why can't you do voiceovers and stuff? You don't want to audition. Uh, you want the answer to that one? 
Well, yeah, I asked the question. Okay, well, help. I'll give you the answer, and Rob knows exactly the answer I'm going to give you. Number one, the big jobs are all being done by well-known actors whose voices are easily recognizable on the commercial. And those more simple commercials that don't require that, uh, such as local commercials or commercials that uh, have uh, other products and rather nebulous voices, are all done in the Midwest somewhere by uh. announcers who live there, okay? And the reason is is because they can be done cheaply and non-union, all right? Mm. So there's very little room. Like, for instance, when I was at Sirius, there were a couple of people there who did voiceovers, um, and I was close to them, and I knew them, and I said, how can I get into that? You know, I figured, hey, this would be a little something I should be doing. And they said, there isn't a business there. He says, we're mm. barely in it. You know, uh, it's just, it used to be, yes. Uh, you know, when I first came to New York, I was out five days a week uh, uh, doing auditions. I never got anything particularly, uh, a couple of things, but never anything really big. But the fact was, there were open call auditions for commercials. Um, All, a lot of it's gone online. There's a big online community for voiceovers. Everybody is doing it from home. Mm -hmm. And you. there's a couple of services if you Google it. There's a couple of services. If you have a home studio, you can submit your, um, you can submit your auditions through... Uh, you know, you can now just create a, a wave file and and send it in an email. There are some services. Have you that have I, you ever done that? Uh no, I I I just decided I, I'm done with it. I, I don't even you know. But it is a way that there is a way. Um, I can't think of the name of the service. There's actually two of them that I'm familiar with, and I was going to do it, and I, I just I get, I just don't have the energy. I don't really feel like. 900 million no's before you get one yes, you know. Well, I have uh, one other suggestion. Since none of these things make any money, maybe you ought to just enjoy yourself, travel, and do things that you want to do while you're still healthy enough to do it. Yeah, where do I, get the, money, where do I get the money for it? Well, you, you know, it doesn't, it depends on how you do it. Uh, today, today, you, you know how much I lost in stock on just one stock I own? Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, you should have supported the I Walmart. lost I lost a thousand dollars today on serious stock. It went down thirty cents. Yeah. Yeah. And that's on a stock well, you that know, isn't worth very much to be in with. Jeff, Alex, Jeff, I'm gonna stab you in the back. No, I didn't Jeff's I wife. Did, I didn't invest in them. They gave me vested me uh, okay. uh, uh, every year for a couple of years they vested me stock. Yeah. About six months ago, Jeff's then. wife pulled out of everything and put into cash, right? Uh, there was a couple of other people that did that. What gave her well, the, here, uh, here, the, the okay. feeling that she needed to do that? Let me, te let me tell you something. I'm, I think Trump, Trump president president that I'm anything? thinking about. I am think I, I have Vanguard, for instance, and I think yeah. maybe with today's stock market, it's worth, uh, let's say it's worth $130,000, maybe a little less in Vanguard stock. Uh, I'm thinking of selling it. No. I, I, okay, I well, let, me, let me, let me, I'm going to sell all of it. Now, let me explain to you. Okay. Uh, no? Hold on a, a second. Kit. Hold on a second. What, what, what is, what is your you, philosophy? Wait, 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 buy it, this high, sell low? This no, no, what's your tax This isn't my philosophy. My business managers, <laughs> this is my business manager's philosophy. When you, at the end of every year, when you pay taxes, you pay taxes on dividends that have been given you because your stock went up. But when it goes down, when it goes down, you don't get to take that as a loss until you sell the stock. Right. So what I do is I sell, so just not paying taxes. I, I sell all my stock, let it sit there for a month. In a month, it's not going to go up that much. Buy it back. Maybe it's gone down, but buy it back. I will be able to take a uh, 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 um, uh, what do you call? It? A, I, a, I will be able no, to get tax credit 
on the loss. Definitely. What what was your basis on this hundred and thirty five thousand? Because if your basis was let's say no, fifth no, grand, no. all I'm saying is means... every year when it's gone up, Phil, I've been given dividends, and as I've been given dividends, I had to pay taxes on those dividends. I don't have to, but when it goes down, I, they're not giving me back money on what I paid in those dividends, but they will pay it back the minute I sell the stock at less than I, I had. I think what Phil's saying is what did you originally buy it for in its original oh, value when uh, you sell it? Because you're you going to have make a, money. You're going to have a capital gains. No, yeah. no, no, because no, I don't have to pay any tax. The original Vanguard on account wasn't a hundred. I don't have to pay dollars. any. It was probably fifty thousand dollars, and it's gone Hold up. Hold on a second. Amount. I haven't had to pay. I wouldn't have to pay a penny on um, that stock. I'd have to pay it on the Sirius, but I wouldn't have to pay it on that stock. And why won't I have to? Because I've been paying taxes all along on that stock as it's gone up. But I'm not take gonna get money back next year because it went down unless I sell it. Um, I, I, I'm not sure. Uh, uh, you, uh, I, I, I guess no, your, your his, business manager I, probably knows, but you should yeah, talk would to think so. a CPA. But he's saying if well, he keeps hope, but remember, his business manager is older than he is. No, that doesn't matter. But I think you should talk to a CPA before you. He is a CPA, Phil. Phil, he is a CPA. But Alex, so I do talk uh, to Alex, a CPA. At one point in time, I sold off a, a, a Roth IRA or something, and I had to pay taxes based on <laughs> that, my. That's because it was an I, it was a, because it was an the, I, it's because it was an IRA. This is a Vanguard but, account that, where I buy still it. Still, is probably going to be the same because your Vanguard account is still a retirement fund, no, and you're probably no, going to be based not, off no, your it's original not, purchase no, price. It's not a retirement fund. It's never been considered a retirement fund. Vanguard is a uh, is literally Vanguard a, is just a brand. It's a place where you invest in stocks. It's a money okay, market. It's, 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 it's a money market. Yeah. All I'm saying IRA. is uh, I've been paying taxes. I've been paying taxes every year on my dividends when it's been going exactly. up. Exactly. I know. I understand that. But I've, I haven't. Been doing but the, when it's going my down, mom set me the up government. Something when I was like four years old, and I've been paying taxes since I've been four. My, and then I sold yeah, it. But off the government was, doesn't uh, say to me. Doesn't say to me. Oh, the your 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 value of your stock went down. We're gonna. We're going to give you back some tax money here. No, you can't do that until you sell it and take the loss. But the, it goes off the initial purchase price. Well, the initial no. when you initially purchased them and opened up the account. Plus no, basis. no, it Plus doesn't. Basis, right. According to my business manager, that's not so, Jason. And I'll believe him before I believe you. You know. Okay. All I mean, right. But I mean, I, I may do that. I may not do that. But all I know is that. Uh, today, uh, the stock market was really bad, really bad. It's gone really into the into the dumper. You know, it's like we're headed to a recession, depression. Bad is that what you're saying? Uh, 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 what did they say that last month there was a bigger loss in the Dow Jones average than the uh, the biggest month long loss since the Great Depression. Is it time to I buy heard. gold? Oh, yeah. Is it time to buy gold? <laughs> That's what Tom Hartman says. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> I would, some would argue it's time to switch back to the gold standard. Yeah. Get off the petrodollar. You know, that, that's another thing about price fixing. Remember, gold was $35 an ounce before it uh, opened up, and then it went up to 800 and God knows what else. Uh, and, you know, any time they had those uh, uh, price uh, fix, uh, not price fixing, but under Ford, under Ford and, under, uh, and under Nixon, they, they fixed prices, and uh, it wasn't good for the economy. It created enormous inflation. Hmm. Uh, you know, because they had uh, what do they call it? Price stability or price it's freezing the price? Thing. Yeah, price freeze. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it, it it created a lot of a lot of other problems. Yeah, but yeah. hey, you know, I I don't I don't know uh, enough to, uh, about those things to really to give you any yeah, advice on it. I don't either, and, and uh, he's still looking into that possibility, trying to see if it's a good idea. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, but but nevertheless. The thing that bothers me is that I've been paying taxes all along on the gains that I've had, and now that I don't have those gains anymore because I'm starting to lose, the government doesn't say, "Oh well, here's some no. money back." You know. And you're, so what you're saying is your gains don't outweigh your uh, the the, co the initial cost. 
even oh, even oh, with my, the dividends? My, gain, my gains my gains are much more than the original cost. But what I'm That's, saying is, so I have, I have paid I have paid taxes on the gains every year. Okay, I, so, uh, so I don't if, know that that matters. If I tomorrow, had, if tomorrow, cable vision. Wait a minute. If tomorrow, I had cable vision. Well, well, let me finish a Go second. Ahead. If, Go ahead. if I t tomorrow uh, uh, start taking money out of my Vanguard, I don't have to pay taxes on that money because I've already <laughs> paid taxes on that money. All right. That's right. Now but on my on my four hundred one k with with uh, with the Sirius, I have to pay taxes on anything You're that right. I take out of there. You're right. You won't pay taxes on that money, but you are going to pay capital gains on what you paid on it when you originally bought it to where you sold it. And right. I, that happened to me. I bought back in the eighties. I bought Cablevision stock, and I completely forgot I had it, and. I even until last year, remember I told you that um, remember I told you that I, I used that credit karma app and I had all that money that was found right and right. I had to re I could reclaim like ten twelve thousand dollars and lost money that I didn't even realize I had. Well, I had to go through I, that was taxable. everything was taxed. I paid tax on that. I had to pay they they asked me, when did you buy it? What was the cost of of all the shares as you bought it? I'm like, how do I get? That's 1985. I bought this stock, you're and they said, "Well, you're going to have to." Say you're before you can you're look gonna it up. You're going to have though. to. You're going to have to. Uh, not 1985. You're not looking up because I asked you about don't think that. So? Really? No. It, today, it's everything's computerized. Yes, but that wasn't before that, right? So you have to pay. What you do is they say, "Okay, you it was six dollars a share when you bought it, and today it's worth twelve dollars a share." You're going to pay the tax on whatever the, the, the profit you made on it was. I, I'd, ask, I'd, I'd, I'd ask newspapers don't have archives. I'd ask Josh yeah. about this, but I don't think this is Josh's bailiwick, is it, Josh? No. <laughs> no, tax law, tax law you, you have to ask somebody else about that. Yeah, yeah. But, they um, didn't but, cover that at the Constitutional Convention. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, so, yeah. Taxes, yeah. so you're saying taxes are unconstitutional, they're not in the Constitution? Well, I, I've heard some people make that argument. So then we shouldn't be paying them. Sure, we can stop oh. anytime you want. I don't understand why you can't just have. I don't understand why uh, someone like Steve Forbes wasn't right in implementing just a, uh, a flat national well, sales tax, uh, uh, going away with. Since all we the only other have one woman here, let me tell you the reason we have taxes now is those fucking women. Uh, <laughs> I no, I thought it was Woodrow Wilson. No, no, what began. happened was what happened. Uh, no, what happened was the Federal Reserve well, Bank. You, the, you might be on the, the women in, in America, uh, through the Women's Temperance Christian Temperance Union and other female groups, were the ones that brought about prohibition. And when they brought about prohibition, they were giving up a lot of tax money because mo uh, the, we didn't have personal income tax, but they did tax alcohol, and the United States. Pretty much 85 percent of its of its money to run the government came from alcohol. So when there was no longer alcohol, they had to have something to replace it. And believe it or not, uh, prohibition, women's right to vote, and uh, uh, and uh, the um, Tax. uh, taxes all it, came at the same yeah. time. They were all as a result of each other. And it was the women with their goddamn temperance union trying to get us guys to stop drinking. Fuck you. Yeah. So, uh, well, Me Too will be after me now. Uh, anyway, yes, Jeff. That's okay. The FBI is probably after me by now, too. So, oh. this reloads company. Yeah. <laughs> Alex used to uh, write on some magazines and things like yeah, that. Yeah, I used to write a monthly column in Hustler. Yeah. 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 Is that a, an option for you to do that kind of thing well, again? Or there, isn't money in, there isn't money in that anymore. I mean, you have to understand that a, a lot of things that you could make money off of. Uh, and what happened to Jason? He just went into the dark all of a sudden. Mm. What, what, what do oh, you, um, oh, there he, he is. Uh, he, Alex, yeah. you could always use this talent. Welcome to Walmart. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> it's always uh, always uh, a doer. Oh, a greeter. A greeter. A greeter. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, 
you know, I think that you ought to just uh, ask Gary to help you budget basically for what you, what you got and enjoy yourself for a while. No, you, you know, just have, uh, yeah, you know, I often have said that the greatest gift you could be given was to know exactly when you were going to die, so you get a portion out what money you had up until that time. Like here I am griping about one little item that I didn't get today because of the money that it costs and whatever. And uh, if I knew that I only had two years left to live, hell, I'd be spending money like it was going out of style. You know, it sounds yeah. like you're dealing with some anxiety and you need to go on some Lexapro. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you, you said it in the past that you were on uh, antidepressants and anxiety medicine, but it took away your fight. Yeah. Well, maybe you're at a point you don't need to have the fight anymore. Well, maybe if I you still got that go fight pulse, going Listen, on. I'm taking this gabapentin and it makes me loopy. But gabapentin's well, last, not, last, not the same. Last night about I don't think about, about, take anything. about 11.15, I was so tired I didn't know if I could finish the show. I, I don't know why, but it's, you know, these fucking pills have just been throwing me for a loop. And, and you get upset when I talk too much. <laughs> hey, I, I'm sorry. I have to interrupt because I, I'm like a week or two behind. So, Charlie Wallace, I I haven't heard your name in like so long. Have you, you called in recently? Three or nights this I week. Started this week. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, I, I got to ask, how many toes do you have? <laughs> I got <forget> four left. <laughs> Two on each foot or? You know, this little piggy no, went to market. This little right piggy foot. stayed at home. This Oh, whoops. <laughs> He said he lost six toes. I said on one foot. Yeah. <laughs> Boy. Um, yeah. No. But uh, he's been here for about three nights now. We're so happy to have yeah, him like, back. I'm like I'm like a week behind. So. Yeah. Charlie's like Seth Brundle. What? What's a Seth Brundle? You know Brundle fly. Brundle. You have the little. Uh, he's lost six toes. Oh, right? I see. Yeah. yeah. Remember the, the movie The Fly? Yeah. With, yeah, with Jeff Goldblum, I remember that movie, something. but not too much about it. I love that movie. Yeah, and then Josh too. Like I just, I, I haven't heard you in forever. I always thought that you and Brian, your voice just kind of sounded alike. Well, they were all. I was wondering if maybe it was like a secret, you know, uh, personality or something. Like you're just calling under a different name. <laughs> no, I hadn't no. called for quite a while, but uh, yeah, have a it's been a while. Guy. So a little it, bit more availability from it, time to time. Yeah. Still working for Sherman it, Williams. It, 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 yeah. It, oh, really? Uh, yep. Yeah. J Jason, Josh's voice apparently sounds more, um, you know, Appalachian Southern, whereas mine's more flat. By the way, so. by the way, Josh, uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Yeah. Yeah. Her. She, uh, uh, yeah. I heard that. Yep. I was driving home today from, uh, Cincinnati and I read that headline on my phone and, uh, I just thought, man, she just refuses. She is just going to refuse to die for two more years. I mean, I just this, know it. This is she only has to hold down one. Kill herself to live. She only has there to hold out one more it. year. Well, it's a biography coming out of movie. This is uh, her third bout with cancer. She'll yeah, but is it cancer? Because I heard that they just saw nodules. Yeah. Well, nodules. I, I don't I don't they, weren't those she cancer? She stated publicly no. that she plans to retire. In the they next didn't five say years, malignancies. So. They said nodules. Uh, yeah, and then so it doesn't necessarily need to be still, cancer. Still, a woman, a woman, a woman from... that age goes under the knife. It's not, it's not a good thing, you know. No. Uh, and yeah. she had some kind of fall a couple of weeks ago, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 That's, that's how they. That's how they found it. Okay, that's what I figured. It, you know, she might like, have been dead if, did, if they didn't find she just, it. She might have been dead. Just, uh, I just know that she cannot stomach the idea that if she left now that he you know he would name her replacement <laughs> i just yeah. Yeah. you know trump can't do anything well, you're right you can't you're, do anything you're, right wait a minute. you're right you though you're right though year. rob you're right rob you say he she's got one more one year. year to keep living because yeah. they can because use there's the, no way they'll use that argument that that last year Absolutely. argument uh if he tries to appoint anybody well hey, uh, you know i think what happened is trump fucked up he pushed her, thinking that he'd be able to get another judge, and then all of a sudden, you know, uh, yeah. they found the cancer and cured her. If yeah. he didn't push her, they wouldn't have found the cancer. Here's the other thing, by the way. By the way, pull out Syria, though, Phil. Very, uh, I gotta say, I support that. Very interesting so Supreme I. Court thing today, though. The Supreme Court voted against 
uh, uh, Trump's immigration policies, the Supreme Court, and, and no, guess that who was just, that was an immigration policy, though. It was just the uh, seeking asylum. Seeking well, asylum. Not, yeah, right. but, but guess, what, what guess, Kavanaugh, who, wait a minute, guess who the deciding vote was? Kavanaugh? No. Well, Chief Justice. What's Roberts? Yep. Roberts. Yeah. Roberts. Yeah. John Roberts. Yep. But, but he's a swing. It's, it's specific, no, but because it's specifically spelled out that if somebody's seeking asylum, that there it doesn't matter if they came into our country, it doesn't matter the route that they took into our country to seek asylum. So at, that to me was just a given. It wasn't anything special. Yeah, but still, you had Roberts uh, vote, you know, uh, against it. And uh, it was not a way. Well, I, I guess I was kind of curious because Josh is really up on this stuff. What did you think about Kavanaugh? Yeah, I'm not a fan of Kavanaugh at all. Do you like beer? <laughs> have, you ever, have you ever been drunk? <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. But, but there's yeah. been plenty of times where you, you know, we were sitting here bitching about stuff, and you actually had a really good arguments about, you know, hey, look at this and that, and blah blah blah. So I didn't know if you had some. Yeah, I think well, a couple I weeks ago we asked about this. I think the last time I called or something, but I, I wasn't a big fan of him personally. I mean, he just—I don't know—he just strikes me as an odd character, you know, which is fine. You you can set that aside, but I I was never a big fan of his. Uh, his views on uh, executive power. I mean, he's a pretty broad executive power guy. Uh, has been, you know, really all his life. Uh, that kind of thing. He's he's kind of in that the president can't be indicted camp, you know, and that. Well, that he whole, can't. Uh, okay. I was never, a, I was never a fan of his from before because of that kind of thing. So I I didn't like the the pick at all. And I'm normally pretty open minded about that. But technically, oh, a president can't be indicted, Kenny. It's just you have to go through the impeachment process. It's never been tested. It's never been tested. We don't know. But, well, well, right. Wasn't that kind of... Well, well let's go to Josh. Actually, Josh knows that. more about this than any of us do. Uh, well, I mean, the, 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 the question of the president being indicted, I mean, I do not know... Okay, the, what I'll, the way I'll explain it is I do not know the law. Okay, I'm not a lawyer. So, but I do know enough to know that at the highest level, one lawyer will tell you he absolutely can, and then a, the other lawyer across the table will tell you he absolutely cannot be, which that's pretty typical. So the only, the only way I can explain it is my field of study was constitutional history, specifically the framing of the Constitution, the ratification era, the very, very early republic. My thesis was written on the, uh, one of the delegates at the Constitutional Convention. My dissertation is an expansion upon that, et cetera, et cetera. So the only thing I can tell you is that it is my firm belief that the people who were in the room that wrote the document, in my opinion, would never have bought into the argument that you could not indict a sitting president, that you had to just let it slide until he was out of office, and then after that you could do whatever you had to do. But if he were a lawbreaker why he were in office that you couldn't indict him and charge him with crimes i i don't buy that but, but there there is a process it's called impeachment it's that's not a legal process though but it is a legal process uh, I mean, no, that, no, that's, no no it's that's, a political that is process. the process that, but you have to go through the political process in order to remove him from office in order to go through the legal process and if you oh, do something oh, okay. bad enough, then you have to go through the political process, get his ass out of office, and then you go through the, you know, the legal process. So and that, we that's had always a, we been had my president, intent. But we had a president who was impeached in our lifetime, and he didn't leave office. Was he was impeached. He wasn't actually found wasn't to convicted. be convicted. Exactly. Well, so there you go. <laughs> it's, it, Impeachment is part of the process. He was impeached, but then they they didn't find enough to be there to remove him from office. You know, like Trump said, I could shoot somebody in the middle of Fifth Avenue. Well, if he did that, okay. Well, maybe you might not be able to indict him, but you impeach him. Well, when he said that, him from office when and then indict him. When he said that, well, he wasn't president. referred. He wasn't referring to being president. He wasn't president at the time when he said that. He was referring no, he to was the fact about that his, yeah. he could shoot somebody on Fifth Avenue in New York City, and the people who mm. like him still would like him. 
you would know. still vote. They probably him. would. That's the crazy part. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah. but that's why I'm saying, as president, it looks like that. Uh, Rob. By the way, I, somebody, I brought something up. By, by the way, somebody wrote <laughs> just quickly. Somebody wrote, uh, "Fire your business manager." Okay. Anyway, yes, Rob. <laughs> I, I brought this up last night, but now that uh, Josh is here, I'd like to get his opinion on it. I said last night that with the Trump uh, calamity, uh, do you think that we'll see changes to the power of the of the office of the president? Because we see that now you could get a rogue in there, some guy that's a free thinker who decides off the cuff that he's going to do this and he's going to do that. Do you think that when he's gone, they'll make changes? You know what? I, I honestly do not, uh, and I know no one likes that answer, and I don't like that answer either, but the reason that I say that is because I haven't seen any evidence as of yet that, you know, even his own party uh, is disturbed by what he does. I mean, I know you get some some outliers. I think every time someone decides they're not going to run for office anymore, they finally decide to speak their mind, and then I'm supposed to, what, respect them because now that they're quitting in three days, they're going to tell me the yeah. truth? I mean, yeah. you know, that's the biggest bunch of horse shit I've ever heard. But uh, I don't, you know, I don't think they will because the trend has been for, you know, probably 75 years the expansion of executive power. I mean, executive power has expanded from day one, no doubt. That's the natural evolution of governments. But it has greatly expanded in what's called, you know, basically uh, an era of, uh, you know, the imperial presidency, Arthur Schlesinger, uh, you know, labeled it. Uh, the, the, the Congress of the United States, the, the legislative branch, has basically abdicated many of their responsibilities to the executive many times for political purposes because they just didn't want to be seen as the people who dealt with the problem because they didn't want to take any blame. I mean, they've just been scared little kittens, you know, for 75 years. It was easier to let someone else handle it. I just, I don't see that trend going away anytime soon, you know, honestly, but it might. Well, that, then, then I have a very, very sad empty feeling in my gut about this <laughs> country. One. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, Jason has yeah. his hand up. Jason? So I, I, I was originally, I would agree with you based on just Trump and, you know, on the federal level. But then you look at actually what states I've been doing recently when you've had Republican, you know, uh, governors and then uh, control of the houses in the states. And then just recently when you had the Democrats elected to governors and attorney generals, you have these uh, state houses that are actually limiting the power of the governors. Oh. I think that might just be an actual practice of what they might want to do on the federal level. Well, but I mean, I agree that you're correct in that, but the states have always been independent players like that since day one. I mean, even since they were colonies, the states have always had different types of governments and very, very strict governments. I mean, some of the colonies didn't even have, uh, you know, unicameral heads of the, the colony or, you know, the state as we would call it now. You know, some of them had more of a committee style. The governors were very, very weak. They were almost figureheads to the legislature. And there were some people that wanted the federal government at its framing to model that. But because of some of the problems that our states had had as individuals and out of as a collective body, you know, the people in favor of broad federal powers, uh, James Madison among them, James Wilson, and a few others won out, you know, won the day. And uh, it, it has, which I think was correct, you know, we did need a strong federal government and a strong figurehead at the top. I just think that since, let's say, the era of Franklin Roosevelt, you know, the rise of liberalism, World War II, etc., it just kind of spiraled out of control. And the Congress has not done much to rein it in since then. I do think the states do a good job at it, but there are 50 individual bodies, and in our, our national government, uh, especially in the era that we live in now on television every night, you know, uh, they they placate to that. I mean, we have a president the, the, that changes your mind. The individual petri dishes. 
There are 50 individual petri dishes, and if you can sure. find that, hey, I can do this in five states, it works here in order to limit the power of the presidency, and now we might have a Democrat coming in charge, let's limit the power. You know, that, that just worries me. You know, yeah. I, I, just, I keep on thinking we need to go to a parliamentary system and make it easier for the party in charge to actually pass stuff. And, hey, you like it or you don't like it. You don't like it, you vote them the hell out and you get somebody else in, and it's easier for them to change the law back to the way that you might want it. Right. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if I'm in favor of that. Well, no, I'm not. I'm not in favor of that. Um, I like the system that we have, but, you know, like I was saying, look, for 50 years, uh, political scientists and historians alike have, you know, fretted over this rise of the imperial presidency and there have been times where uh they thought it was going to come to an end you know when the congress took back quite a bit of power in the clinton era and really started to run the show uh they thought maybe it was finally going to collapse because you know the legislature in the clinton era really stood up to the president uh you know bill clinton uh politically motivated or not you know it doesn't matter they they really were trying to run the show at that time but I think the problem that happened and the reason that it wasn't able to end the imperial presidency is because the Congress ran them up. Well, let me, you know? let me, I mean, let me, let me, they, ask, they you, let me ask you this, Josh. Do you have the feeling that Trump uh, doesn't know exactly what the president's rights are and that he thinks that it's <laughs> like one of those magic things that happens to you where you can do anything you want to do because you're president? Uh, I'll be honest he with you. doesn't understand. Yeah, what? This, this is going to make everybody laugh, but I'm I'm only half joking. I wouldn't doubt if there is some sort of a scene out of the movie Dave where President Trump has to sit around at the cabinet table and they have to explain to him how government works and have little signs to remind him who everyone is before they come in the room so that he knows I what to do. I think they've had to do that already. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Has, haven't there been uh, – who was it who just left recently who was saying that, you know – I had to tell him repeatedly that, that was illegal. You can't do this. This is not yeah, what you can do. Um, you know, I, I think the the power of the president is already restricted enough. You know, and that's what it should be. It should be, you know, the the Congress against the president. That, that's why there's the separation of powers. Yeah. You know, don't take powers away from him. Just unite and get go against him. We're already set up enough yeah. to be a stalled government. You know, the way we are. You know, you don't have to sit there and take the power away from the president and give it more towards the Congress because then you're taking away the power of a stalled government. Rob has his hand up. Rob? Yeah, yeah but, but think about how crazy this is. This guy is could be indicted. His attorney is going to go to prison. The only reason they're not <laughs> indicting him is because you don't indict a sitting president, right? So he could be indicted. He's being looked at. They're closing down his foundation for shoddy practices. They're surrounding him and his, his Trump empire and all of this other stuff. But yet, he can run for president again. He can, uh, he can Do you think fulfill he would win? all of the... Do, uh, well, I, he, yeah, I think, I think nah, he has I a good chance of winning. But the point being that this guy could be indicted. So why would they let him run again? Why can't he be told you need to resign? Well, I don't understand that. How you, there's you no let common the sense to that. Go through. But yeah. there's no. There, there, there's there's no, no, I don't think there's any way in hell he could win again. There's a new hashtag. It's, it's a waste there's of time. a new hashtag running around. Hashtag resign. Uh, asking Trump to resign, which I don't and think he'll never. Happen. He'll never do that. He's the gonna, only way he'll resign is if 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 they get one of his kids. Yeah, they're yeah. gonna get the kids. Yeah. yeah. They get one of the kids, Which and they use them. that as he yeah, can't. Phil, Phil, can't I was uh, uh, Rob, I was listening to someone Charlene, else there who uh, Charlene, agreed with me. Don't move, Not even his kids will make him. Don't, don't move. Make him oh, I think he's looking for his kids. Wait, 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 Char, so I think, hold on a second, Charlene. Don't uh, quit moving your camera around so much. It's making us dizzy. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, I Phil is uncharacteristically quiet in this. Mm -hmm. He's here tonight. I was going to ask you where he was. <laughs> <laughs> I knew what they going after good Alex. I was laughing in my room. I was getting a chuckle out of that. Really. Yeah. Where is he? He's coming. Well, we don't let him Where's talk. Him? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm I'm just listening and uh, you know letting you guys go at it and talk about how you're going to have a parliamentary government and shit like that. Yeah, you just keep stroking yourself. All right. 
Hey, so, but you'd oh, be but, happy with a parliamentary hey, but, government if it was on your side. Because, no, like I said, no, I, I don't, I don't I'm, think I'm happy with what we got. The, 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 you know, the Republicans get in charge. Hey, let's try their ideas. You have all these ideas. Let's not stall them. Let's try them. And then let's see them fail. Well, you and know, we do, we do, we do. And then have, you go we, back to another. We do have the know, constitutional. The side. We do see, have, liberals think that their, their way is the right way and that anything else, you compromise to a liberal, is that Republicans should do it their way. That's their compromise. No, but I'm sorry. That's Republicans don't believe in compromise at all. Republican is just me, 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 me. There is no, you know, no gun control whatsoever. You can't have that because that's unconstitutional. Every crazy should be able to have every gun he wants. Well, do you, do you, you want, want the well, well, which rights, the list of being in the what, Second Amendment. What, what part of the First Amendment uh, that you don't want? Uh, you know, either either it's it's all there or it's not there. You got the Second Amendment; it's there. It's just as strong and just yes, as important as the First it, Amendment. It is there with the strong regulation of a militia. So no, you have no, to belong to the militia. About, yeah. No, it, it, it's right there. It's spelled out. Regulation is right in there. Yeah. Well, really, you know, guys keep on forgetting. We'll there see is, how the Supreme Court. There's no compromise deals. with well, you guys. There, no, there's there, no interpretation. There is, there is a Jason. Case. Hold on a second. Jason. Yeah. Is there any interpretation? Let, let, to the Brian. First Brian one? has his hand up. Brian. Just say real quick. There was a there was a uh, conversation I was having with a staunch Republican on Facebook who uh, told me, according to his interpretation of the Second Amendment, back in the day when it was enacted, the term "well regulated" meant "well trained." As in well-trained militia. I'm still there. You want to have a gun? Be well-trained. No, we don't have that All today, I'm saying though. is, and Josh... Uh, I said to him, there's no difference. Wait a minute, hold on a second. Josh is a constitutional uh, expert here. The, 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 the fact is it's saying in order to maintain a well-ordered ordered militia, you are setting up a caveat, are you not? Well, there is a ton of an ambiguity in a lot of those, you know, uh, first ten amendments and, and even the ones and beyond. And we've seen the proof of that over the last 200 plus years because we're still having the same arguments that many people had at the time of the, the, the framing and the ratification. Maybe not specifically to that amendment because it wasn't as big a deal to them back then. I mean... Because it uh, but, took ten minutes to long one round. In your in your uh, opinion, can, in your opinion, Josh, uh, is is the Constitution necessarily good at this point, or does it need a rewrite? Oh, I think it's fine. I just think that in some cases, such as possibly the Second Amendment, just in a few minor areas. I don't know that the framers personally would show up and say, "Oh, well, no, that's what we meant," or "No, no, that's what we meant." I think they would show up and be disappointed because they would say, well, why should it matter what we meant then and what, you know, what we thought then in some of these cases? It's been 200 and, you know, 35 plus years or whatever. You guys live in a different world and we left you these mechanisms to make these adjustments and you haven't done that. You, We didn't fail you. You failed you. You know, I think that would be their Great point is. We worked it out to fit our world, and we left you a way to work it out to fit your world, and you haven't done that. So, you know, blaming us is the equivalent of laziness, as I think, mm -hmm. you know, is how they would see it. And the last point on that is, you know, as far as the parliamentary system, et cetera, I can tell you that, you know, I don't – the reason that they didn't choose that simply because is because – they didn't want a reactionary system. They wanted a slow meat grinding system because, you know, people don't like to hear it. But I'm telling you, the fact is the framers feared democracy. They feared was parliamentary the system even invented then? Well, was sorry, a parliamentary system even invented at that point? Oh, well, yeah. I mean, it, you know, I mean, the the European, you know, democracy or, you know, semi democracies and, you know, even uh uh, well, the Constitution the was based partially had, on Magna you know, Carta, was it not? Systems of, uh, you know, bicameral legislatures, et cetera, with a parliamentary system, not not quite with the powers that they have now, but there were there were systems of government around at the time uh, similar to that. But, 
you know, I'm just, they feared democracy. I, I mean, they feared the 50.1% deciding that they didn't want to pay their taxes because rich people have too much money and there's more poor people than rich people. And, we'll and then, I mean, we have to remember at the, 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 you know, the founding of our country, it was the rich people who didn't want to pay their taxes. <laughs> well, right. But even more so than that, it was, it was poor farmers and other people like that who were on hard economic times who basically would refuse to do, I mean, you know, you know, we don't probably have time to go over it, but I mean, you cannot discount the fact that Shay's Rebellion, feel free to look that up, you know, and, and read just even for 10 minutes about it, how fresh in the mind of the framers that was, you know, just this small town rebellion of, uh, you know, poor farmers and merchants who wouldn't, couldn't afford to pay back, you know, rich people, went to their state legislature, which was very reactionary and demanded paper monies be printed and, you know, the cancellation of debts and, you know, things just got out of hand. And I'm telling you, at, at the convention, the framers feared democracy. I mean, they just, they weren't anti-democratic. They didn't, it's not, I'm not saying they didn't want the people to vote. They just didn't want the people to be able to change their mind every 15 minutes because you and I know if there's one thing that has held true since the time of the founding to now, that is that the American people will change their mind every 15 minutes. And they knew that that was a dangerous set of circumstances. I mean, it, it, and that I think that's what a parliamentary system sort of sets up is, you know, everyone has a bad week and, you know, it's like an NFL head coach. Let's get rid of this guy and get another guy, you know, because that'll fix all our problems. I mean, you know. Hey, how are the Browns doing? You know, uh, <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> I mean, yeah. but, you know, that's I think that's what they feared was that a reactionary set of views taking hold and running amok. And, you know, six months of... But we haven't had it, and I think that's maybe can, what we need. Well, I mean... Let, let the silliness I run just, amok. And then well, let people understand and realize when you vote for that, you know, this is the consequences. And then maybe they'll force us to well, grow up. I, I would argue that silliness, silliness is, is running amok right now. And I'm not as convinced as you are that uh, Donald Trump can't be can't be elected again yeah, you know why i think there are people there are people out there it's it's no longer about what's best or what's right or what's wrong it's about i don't want to be wrong myself nobody could be nobody's everybody is so rigid that they're willing to buy into anything to believe anything just not to be wrong hmm. call it personality too yeah well, I think the main reason why Trump could win again is because we're still using those electronic voting systems. Really? Yes. By a 10-year-old. Uh, and Russia. I, I actually believe votes were physically changed by the Russians during that last election yeah, in but 2000. Let me ask you this, Charlie. Um, you know, and I've heard that argument, and I, I, I certainly understand the fear that people have about electronic voting machines. But remember, what did we do before electronic voting machines? We simply took the votes down to City Hall, and while we were on the way to City Hall, we dumped them in the river. You know, so, I mean, there was always some way that someone was going to game the system. Christ, look at those videos in Florida, if you remember. What was that? Well, looking Hanging at Chad? <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm not talking about 2000. I'm talking about 2018. All those trucks of... Uh, truckloads of uh, voter ballots Ballots. and shit like that that were being filmed by somebody's cell phone camera and uh, they were told to leave yeah but that's the thing we have the cell phone camera now and we can do everything when you just do straight up electronic you know you don't have the physical video footage to be able to and and I think that I, I believe because especially the county I live in I live in Macomb County Michigan you hear about my county every time there's a political, you know, a, a presidential election. It comes down to Macomb County, Michigan, and it's so easy to have that be that little swing state or swing county, swing district. Mm-hmm. You know, if I'm going to be a, a foreign entity coming in to adjust something, I'm going to adjust it in the swing area. I'm not going to try to adjust it in some area that's always going to the re- Republican, or always going to Democrat. I'm going to go to that swing area and I'm going to adjust it there because, hey, the numbers are off a little bit. 
It's a swing area. It's normal. Yeah. Thank you for your adjustment, comrade. Okay. <laughs> See this can I say one thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Remember, Tony, your Tony, DNA comes from Russia. Wait a minute. The hell's frozen over. Tony has something to say. Yes, yeah, Tony. See, this confirms what Rob said, Alex, before. And I you know, I'm not trying to say you guys are wrong, but what Rob said, it just sums up what you guys said. You you everything just he did win. And you have not everything can be say is a fix. See that and people can't get over the fact he that he won but won. lost by three million votes. He lost by three million. But, he's three still, million. but, he, but he, in the world spectrum, he did win the states he was supposed to win. No, exactly right. what I'm saying. Like he Robert's, lost by just enough. He could win again. Exactly the right spot. But that's, if that's there was the no, if there, uh, Tony, if there was no electoral college, uh, it, it, uh, he wouldn't be president right, right now. He would have lost. He, he would have yeah, lost. But there is an electoral college. And, and, like and we, we are led winning. to believe, we are led to believe from the time we're children and we're taught all this in school is that we take a vote and the person who gets the most votes wins. That's what we hey, always if believe. if the queen That's had balls, president. she'd be king. Rob is right what he said. When sometimes when people don't get what they want, they want to look for the conspiracy. Maybe the answer's right in front of our face. Well, I do. You don't think that there were the, the Russians meddled in our in our because you'd be the, you'd be the last really, you'd be the last. I think guy. he really did win legitimately because I think people just can't get over the fact that he won. And Rob is right; he could win again. I I think he, I think the Russians he will meddled. Win again. I think the Russians meddled in the in the elections by spreading what we call in my business FUD. Remember fans, Phil. Yeah, you might. You they could, uh, they spread a lot of news. stuff, a lot of fake news that people believed. Okay, be and they don't understand why, but all of the crap that you see on Facebook, the you know all that shit, and and they've proven it that there's a ton of that out there, and they're saying it's coming again. Most and they of this discord, most of this discord, most of this uh, separation and and uh, in fi fighting amongst uh, the American people, a lot of it was all caused by this fake news that the Russians, uh, the Chinese, and you, and you don't think it was Iranian, caused. You, 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 you don't think, you don't think it was caused by the discord yeah. that Trump created. It I, is. I, I, Social media. Uh, it, we all are becoming hateful of each other because of social yeah. media. It's true, and and so they planted the seed. Whether Trump is a uh, is uh, you know is adding to it or not doesn't really matter. It, it was it was done before Trump was elected. Uh, the 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 fighting this and the yeah yeah the disinformation campaign uh, was there before Trump won. And uh, and and we're all separated and arguing and and, and about about nothing. Well, you know, I, 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 the sun, I, the sun will a, come up tomorrow. Yeah. Well, you want you want to believe that fake news exists. I'd like to believe that lazy news exists. You know, the people that are just I, not I can, just not I think doing the their Russians not, did. Just, what. We were told that the Russians interfered with our election, but I think that they manipulated Facebook and Twitter and all of these social media right. platforms. They did. And they did. It's, it's a theory that they did that. No, that's not, it's a, not theory. a theory. It's what it's what uh, all what of happened. these agencies have decided <laughs> happened. You know, whether it was the CIA and all these well, other gee, there investigations. Are awful lot, there are they, an awful they, lot of those organizations who seem to agree. And the only person not agreeing is a guy who wanted to build a Trump Tower in Moscow. It, you know, but it was done before all of that. You know, well, sure. I, I don't think. Yeah. Well, 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 think well, hold on a second. Hold on a second, Bree. Uh, since I can't see your yeah. hand, what were I mean, you? If you if you look throughout time, every new medium has brought a way to increase propaganda in one way, shape, or form or another. Social media is just more kind of stealthy because instead of being uh, mass communication, you know, and we've talked about this, I, I've mentioned what are we here, and instead of being mass, it's sort of, it can be interpersonal, it can have a gatekeeper, it may not have, and so, the, you know, the social media, look at how it affected the, the countries in the area where I live. You know, and social media has had so many effects we didn't realize, and it it hasn't regulated itself. Look at all the other mediums. Look yeah. at look at films. Eventually, they had to have a rating yeah. system, self-imposed. Right. Right. Electronic okay. video games. Look at music and Tipper Gore. <laughs> right. You know, social media never had it, and we need and we kind of need it. I think we do need it. 
That's a good yeah. point. That's a great yeah, point. Zuckerberg says sorry, but it's not enough. Yeah. Well, um, so, yeah, that's that's the only point. You can start a rumor tonight and see how long it, and see how much you can go viral. You can think of something. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. And say, well, let's try to just think this out and see how far we can take. Well, it. I mean, the problem that you have today uh, with with social media is is that you have a this place where you can disseminate information without having to be vetted. You can spread any lie you want to, say anything you want to, and nobody's there to say, bad boy, don't do that. You know, in the old days when you had three news networks, they all monitored what their people were doing. And, and, hey, Charlene, Gatekeeper. quit moving that camera around, okay? I'm sorry, Alex. Please. I think she's falling asleep. Please. No, it's in my hand, so yeah. it's like uh -huh. yeah. hard. Uh, hey, Rob, you like the picture? Yeah. Hey, hey, Alex, look. This may be a stupid analogy. No, wait a minute. But, 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 no, wait a minute. but the point I'm making is when you had three networks, they were always, and, and Rob will remember this in, in news organizations and so on, they were very careful about vetting everything that was reported as news. That's right. And now we don't. Yes. Uh, Vernon Nunn, you're calling, and I can't take your call. I've got, I'm, I got a, I got a royal flush royal here, flush. and I can't fit another person in there. Let me just put him on for a second. Let me see here. Sure. Uh, if if he doesn't blow the whole thing. Hello there. You there, Vernon? Vernon? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. Listen, here. we're gonna have to hang up on you because we have a full. We literally have a royal flush here. And uh, we can't uh, we can't put another person on. So he seems to be doing all right here. I can see everybody I, here. Well, well, we, I can't. We can't see him. He's off the screen. Yeah. Well, on the Skype, you can see him, but well, you can't see him ask on the him YouTube. What he called in for? Let him make his point. Well, well, I just heard everybody talking about uh, how Trump won those three states, and even though he got three million fewer votes that's the whole Final premise problem. of the national popular vote interstate compact that i talked about a couple of months ago mm -hmm. there are 11 states plus the district of columbia who have already passed it and if we can get more states like michigan jason like wisconsin now that there's a, a democratic governor up in wisconsin to pass you this like mm -hmm. we get 270 no equivalent of 270 electoral votes that that will vote according to the national popular vote, not the m person who got the most vote in their state. If they had that in place, Trump would not be president. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Well, I, yeah, I, I, I don't know if you can go by the national popular vote for your state, though. That's just doesn't seem representational. Well, but no, when it comes, why to isn't the, it? Why look, should why should a state like Wyoming because why, or why North should Dakota Michigan have two senators just like the state of California? when the state of California has 15 times more population. I understand, but why, should, in the House of why Reps. should the state of Michigan vote the same as California? Because the national popular vote. In other words, whoever wins the most popular most vote votes. nationwide should be the person who's elected president. We have this but, antique but, electoral college out there, but you can't get rid of it because it's in the Constitution unless you write a constitutional amendment, which isn't going to happen. Well, isn't that What's the same the as maybe making, your state, making your state either go 100% towards who won or uh, um, you know, fragmented to we're going to give so many electoral votes to percentage-wise? Well, right now, only two states do that, and that's Nebraska and Maine. Yeah. Everybody yeah. else votes winner take all, but it's winner take all whoever got the most votes in their state. Hmm. What's so, the name of the legislative program you're talking about again, Vernon? It's called the National Popular Vote Interstate Compact, okay? And it's a, a law. See, the, the Constitution allows every state to decide how they select their electors. Every state can decide how they do that. Now, it just turns out that most states do it all the same way. Only Nebraska and Maine are different. They apportion the number of electors they send to the Electoral College based on in, in the popular words, in vote a in their state. In a particular state now, it's winner take all. In other it's words, It's winner take yeah. all of your state. If yeah. you have, okay. if Donald Trump wins Kentucky, which he did, then all the electoral votes for Kentucky goes to Donald Trump, even though Hillary Clinton won by three million votes. 
well, nationally. You, you know, I think nationally. that I, yeah. There's I, also I, proportional I, voting. That, that's, I think that's why uh, the wording the verbiage I was looking for. Uh, what, proportional voting. Yeah. Yeah, so if if fifty percent of your state voted for one and fifty percent voted for the other, fifty one percent voted for the other, you know that's how you should do your electoral college. That's not hundred take all. In case people are wondering, but, who are, Wyoming only has three electoral yeah. votes, Jason. Okay, but it, it's and never going to be fifty fifty. It's not going to be fifty fifty. There's going to be one person off. Right. By the Rank way, by the way, voting. for people who are just Rank tuning choice. in, one person you can't see on your screen is Vernon because we when we go above a certain amount actually it's 10 people 11. plus me it's hey, a, Alex? It, 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 one person gets pushed off to the side yes uh, uh, royal great. flush with an ace up our sleeve yeah yeah right exactly. <laughs> huh does right that make me the ace Bree? what were you going to say tony uh -huh. oh you going to say yeah would it, i have a solution maybe for this to avoid a trump catastrophe maybe for you to run for higher office you have to be winning something you have to be a senator you have to no. be a governor nah, you nah, just can't no, walk nah, off no. the street how many nobody no. here would agree with how, that how do you make the rules like that tony well because even alex yeah, and obama yeah. was under quality well i think you have to win office for something else before you just walk into the bill no, i don't I but, don't, you'd I have don't. To, but you'd have to establish that in law well they have to put that in the constitution well, that, that would be a constitutional amendment. Right. That's not going to happen. I don't think he could do the job. Nobody's going to do that because it, like, it goes. Well, I don't it, say he was under qualified. No, but if if uh, you're 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 limiting who can run for president, and anybody but should be allowed to run for that? president. He never ran. He can't even run a dog. No, it doesn't. It, do, it doesn't Tony, matter. Phil, Tony, 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 Tony. What kind of what kind of uh, of uh, of experience does a senator does a senator have for being president? Well, more than Obama, no, more than no, Trump. No, 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 no. Now, a guy who was a governor might have no, more experience at being president. Because governors have to do a lot of manage money and take care I of their local you. militia and well, all kinds of things like that. I, I think Tony's so on to something. Trump should be put his hat in the ring. Do you they think, wait a minute, wait a minute. All right, what have you won before this? Well, so, I've won nothing. Then so, you can't run. But whenever, somebody, whenever you apply for a job, there are minimum requirements. Yeah, what's his requirement? It's nothing. I run a hotel? Hey, hey, but there's, oh, there's right, hold on a second. Stop it's a up second. to the, the population of the United States to decide what that Stop is. Stop a Every second. Yeah, but this guy would have qualifications Josh? that he would Okay, all right. Shut up, Tony. Need, shut up. Need. Shut up. Enough. We know. We understand what you're saying. Uh, uh, Josh, how would that settle with the, with the Constitution if we suddenly said, you can't be president of the United States unless you have previous experience in political Or office. you're 38 years old. 35. Um, well, I, I mean, that particular rule would require an amendment, and I also don't believe that it would be consistent with the uh, belief of the framers, uh, which doesn't mean we can't do it. I mean, you know, as we talked about earlier, we can do what we want to do, but I think they argued the criteria pretty robustly for several days on what it should take to be eligible to be president of the United States. They settled upon what they settled upon, and, you know, it's worked, uh, you know, for 200 plus years. Uh, mostly, I mean, yeah. look, the price of democracy is that mistakes will be made. You know, at times, uh, you know, there are tools in there to make changes if, if we choose to. Uh, you know, especially with you know the electoral why, college. Why, I mean, why did they I agree? Make it, why did they make it 35 years? What? Why was that well, arbitrarily a date? I guess because everybody lived didn't live as long. Yeah, I you know I think so. I mean you know uh, a lot you know people died in their sixties a lot you know yeah. in, in that in that era for sure. I don't remember the the life expectancy at at the time, but it was around that. You know I mean I just think a thirty five year old you know in that era wasn't viewed as as young as you know we view it today for yeah. sure you know i mean why don't we make, why don't we also make a law on the higher end though saying nobody over 75 can run for president well you know i don't they didn't really kick that around much uh so i'm i'm I, you know and i don't i don't know why it just never really entered their mind i don't think you the, know the, the the Whigs and the tories were trying to keep a republican from running that was 34 
So they, <laughs> they set it at 35. Yeah. I've got a question for Josh. Oh, by the way, somebody Alex. just uh, wrote, uh, Forbin Colossus wrote, Tony for president. Okay. Uh, he's an exper- he, but he's inexperienced, folks. You know. He's old I've enough. i got a question for Josh, uh, Alex. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, Josh, what, uh, what do you think, being the, the uh, constitutional scholar on the panel, uh, what do you think about the National Popular Vote Interstate Compact? You know, I've been reluctant to kind of want to move away from the Electoral College for a long time, but, you know, I, I am open to the idea, and uh, I would be okay with the that that sort of a system, um, uh, and, and you're correct, that could work. Um, you know, another option, too, is if, if you wanted to do away with it and, and literally just change it to, you know, a popular vote count, in other words, if a guy gets one more vote than another guy, you know, he wins. Um, you know, it can be done. I mean, the people do have the right to call for another convention um, for the specific purpose of amending the Constitution under Article 5. Uh, yeah. You know, I think it takes 34 states' legislatures to agree. Uh, Twelve states have agreed over the last, you know, eight or nine years for this movement. Uh, it just it, it's never seemed to gain much traction, but it is possible. I mean, you know, uh, it would be a, an enormous... Uh, historical feat if it could ever happen but I think one day you know it's possible there's a mechanism there for that my argument is that uh, getting uh, an amendment to the Constitution is practically practically impossible in this time that we have right now where everything is so polarized you're never going to get an amendment to the Constitution but Uh, the Constitution allows all states but if, the, but if the Constitution allows the states to decide how to pick their electors, then you, they can do it any way they want. Yeah, I agree. And and I, so I guess what I would say to that is uh, we're not really in disagreement. Um, but I think, and you're probably going to agree with me here, you know, it's got to, the people have got to start calling for it. You know what I'm saying? You know, the, if, the power has got no. to em- emanate from the people. And, and if that's what they want, they've really got to start pushing for uh, elected representatives that will support that kind of a change, you know? Or or we just need Zuckerberg and Putin to agree to it. <laughs> That's a good point. Very yeah, good. I was thinking about Colossus's uh, statement that Tony for president, he's old enough and he sure tweets enough, you know? <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, listen, Tony. Uh, um, um Gee, could I? Uh, well, uh, the trouble is Kevin wants to come on as Santa. And, I'll drop off. Uh, yeah, but I don't know if we can even fit him on anyway. Um, oh, boy. Uh, how are we going to do this? Uh, you can arrange, it's your last show. You can arrange okay, some okay. shit around. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I'll I drop know, off, I, Alex. I'll, I'll drop okay, off. Okay, why don't you sure? drop off, and I'll get rid of Tony, too, and that'll make room for him. Okay. Thank you, Tony. I appreciate it. Yeah. All right? Thanks. Thanks. Because Tony's always. By the way, we are you know what I do, ten, Alex? We, what? We're about we're about ten minutes from the closing of the government. Oh, oh, you're right. <laughs> yeah. right. Hey, you know what that means? That the TSA doesn't get paid. Isn't that justification enough to close the government? Yes. All the legislators went home. Okay. By the way, uh, Kevin, if you're listening, well, Santa, oh, if I you're listening, agree on this. Come ahead. What? I'm tired of them fondling people's nuts and getting away with it. Well, uh, I think that the Grinch who stole Christmas is Trump, uh, because there could yeah. be a lot of families who are not going to be able to have yeah. the same kind of Christmas they wanted to have. The TSA is going to have Trump to work without the pay. government. Huh? Yeah. What? What? What did you say, uh, uh, Bree? Bree? Trump is fine with the government shutdown. He a lot of uh, he hasn't even filled a lot of positions. He doesn't really care he thinks he can run it all himself i mean if you said to him you know mr trump can you run the white house by yourself he'd be like yeah sure mm-hmm. can you keep everybody safe by yourself yeah sure <laughs> you know that nobody was the knows thing the other day was schumer when the schumer meeting he said i'm not going to blame it on you it's on me it's the government right. shut down blah 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 right. but now he's saying it's the democratic shutdown it's the schumer shutdown you know, yeah yeah well you know guys, why you know why? Because it got through. Because they were not the going to give him five billion dollars for no, a fucking No, it, it got wall? through the house, okay. but he needs, unless there's a nuclear option, he needs uh, sixty votes in the Senate. And so, no, if the, the nuclear if can't all, be used on this type of a call, yeah. I understand. Use, 
By the way, but, uh, no, even but, if but, even if they go nuclear, hey, everybody, they can't take everybody, that vote cool on it, now. cool it. Santa is here. Y'all just gotta lighten up. Jesus Christ. <laughs> that oh, sounds like oh. Santa. Oh, it so, is Santa. That sounds like the Santa I can uh, get Santa behind. Santa from South Park. Yeah. Oh, fucking ho. <laughs> Here's <laughs> our fucking razor blade. I want I've been out running around Santa. all Santa. fucking Santa. night. Yeah. Trying to do Alex, shit. Alex, that we get to you go guys around are all and talking everybody politics. asks what they want from Santa. Well, well wait a hey, minute. Let's turn up your shocker. Let, yeah, the, let so, Santa so, talk for a second here. Yeah, what? You were... so I, get a, I, I get a letter from this dickhead Trump. Yeah. Dear Lion Santa. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Santa, if they stock build market. the border wall, can you get over it? <laughs> Fix my stock market. Give me a wall. Give me all the votes for Capitol Hill. <laughs> Those escalators. <laughs> yeah, anybody well, I'm out the all pony. fucking night, right? Yeah. I'm out all fucking yeah. night. I can stop by Capitol Hill. I make sure nothing goes wrong there. You ain't getting no fucking wall. Yeah. I thought he was getting yeah. a pony. Yes, and it's easy for you to say you know, you're complaining to us about talking politics, but meanwhile you run you've been running a sweatshop for over two hundred fucking years. <laughs> <laughs> you've been having forced animal slave labor do your bidding for Yeah, and, and what you're using is you're so, using so, those, those poor little elves who can't get work anywhere else. Yeah, he hires so, the handicapped. He's gonna he's There's gonna put so all the elves Mexicans. out of work. Yeah. Yeah. And take all the credit for it. Yeah. Then I gotta go by Ruth Ginberg's house and put some pixie dust up her ass so he doesn't make a bad decision again. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why I've been late, hand. running around all damn night, making sure shit don't happen so that guy don't screw everything up for the next year. Where'd you park your sleigh? On his front lawn. <laughs> okay. And the deers are shitting all over him. <laughs> <laughs> so I take it, Santa, you're a liberal? I've been busy all night. <laughs> <laughs> Shitting on people's lawn. <laughs> well, it isn't even Christmas. Shitting on the White House lawn. <laughs> Shitting down their chimneys for yeah. the Trump voters. There you go. Uh, <laughs> Phil, you might want to sleep with one eye open. Uh, who, who's going to get coal in their <laughs> stocking? There you go. Who's a clothespin get, on your nose. Who's going to get coal in their <laughs> stocking this year, Santa? Alex Bennett. <laughs> Government <laughs> workers. I didn't hear it. Uh, what uh, what kind of who who's who whose stockings are you going to put coal in? Oh, there's a whole bunch of them. There's not enough coal, but you got to go by Virginia to get all them guys to dig it out for me. <laughs> it's got to be clean coal, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> clean coal. And you got to spit Where on it the, and wipe it off. Got got rid of the EPA so they can go down there and pull it all out. Okay. And the, <laughs> anybody anybody want to ask Santa for something? How about you, Charlie? What would you like to ask uh, Santa for for Christmas? <laughs> for some toes. <laughs> that would help. World peace. Is that toes or toast? <laughs> uh, 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 yes. Uh, how about you, Charlene? Anything you want to ask Santa for? Um, A steady cam, perhaps. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right. I need one. Yeah. I don't have to hold it. Yeah. Um, do you have any uh, anything you want to ask Santa for? Nobody wants anything, I guess. Huh? Well, well, I can say that, uh, you know, Alex, you're worse than my dad. You let the little shit get to you, and like the Charlene's camera. Who gives a fuck? I wasn't even paying attention to the screen, so, well, you know, it, just it, look away. Right. And the other thing about Santa, uh, you know, if there's any way you could restore national sanity or any semblance thereof, well, that would be great. He's Appreciate the guy it. to but do I'm it. I'm not expecting any miracles. Because he's, sa he's sanity clause. Ha -ha. Yeah, well, I, I can get away with it because I can fly by and just, you know, do it and then fly by. Yeah. Take off. Yeah. Head for the North Pole. By the way, he this, has no jurisdiction up there. If you don't think this is Santa, pull on his beard. Go ahead, pull on your beard, Santa. <laughs> Show him. It's See? real, baby. <laughs> it's the real stuff. <laughs> it's the real stuff. Right. Jeff, as a good Jew, what do you want for Christmas? What do you want to ask Santa for? I want I want uh, next year to have Gap not still running. Oh, okay. Yes. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. Well, we'll, we'll see how I'm feeling after the first of the year. Uh, yeah. Know. It would be nice if people will respect science again. If they respect what? <laughs> science. Y yes. Would, now people hate science now. What They're not going to do that, though, if they believe in an elf going from house to house every 
<laughs> they're they're one step away from believing in somebody who died for their sins well, being held, it, held it, on the cross. It, you know, as though they didn't, as though they aren't going to give their kids the worst lesson they ever learned the day they have to tell them that a certain Mr. Claus doesn't exist. But now on top of it, they're going to say have to say that the shelf elf on the shelf doesn't anymore either. You know, hey, how they can can't afford the exist? I'm looking at a Santa right now. It's right, right in front of you, right on your show. Oh, he's and you're saying it doesn't th exist. This is the to me the genuine Santa. He's this kept is the real deal. He's kept giving me Santa a gift. No all he, he's giving me the gift. Of his, <laughs> he's giving me the gift of his presence all uh -huh. year long. Come sit on my lap and tell me what you want for Christmas. Yeah. Tell me about the first thing that pops up. See, and, and all I want is is more underwear and socks. Hey, I think we already saw your underwear tonight, Phil. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm wearing the uh, is that pajama uh, pants. Gabnet uniform. Yeah, well, I'm. I'm oh, wearing I thought the, the Gabnet uniform is red and black, isn't it? No, no. It can, yeah, it, 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 it can be any any color, any color. I got gr I got green for uh, Christmas. You, you got them too. Every. <laughs> And and Tony was wearing them. I saw that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but his has bunnies on it. Well, that's Tony. <laughs> you know, I mean, come on. You know, yeah. Tony wouldn't be Tony if he didn't have bunnies on his underwear. Oh, yeah. there well, we saw we saw Bree. We saw Bree for a quick yeah. second. You know, li yeah. live video from yeah. Dubai. Yeah, uh, I got a poor network connection though, so I got to stay on audio. Oh, I see. Okay. Oh, well, you look good there so, for a second. How long do you guys think that this uh, government's going to stay closed? Monday. You really think it's going to be that short? Yeah. I'll say that I into the new year. What I if agree it, with you. I think into the new year. What if yeah. what if it goes January 4th? What uh, just quickly Phil, how do you do you, you feel Trump is taking the right stand? Uh, I think uh, that the Congress is actually, uh, the Senate is, is actually taking the right stand by uh, agreeing to negotiate this thing and, and bring the people together and we get what we get. But they're, they're actually acting like human beings right now because I guess they wanted to go home for the weekend. But, uh, you know, they said they were going to bring in Pelosi and, uh, and uh, the, you know, the, the heads of the, the heads of the deal and they were going to and they were going to discuss it and that nothing so, is hey, off the hey, table. Phil. Phil, asking a Mexican asking this, do you think we actually need a border wall? Well, now let's Mexico? not get into that with 15 seconds left before the music yeah, plays. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's other ways of doing it. Uh, exactly. Okay. Good. Maybe, we'll just maybe leave it at that, need, Phil. Maybe, just leave it at that. That will, that will be the gift that we'll keep on giving, just that you said that. Okay? You know? Cameras, sensors. Exactly. It's a Electronic miracle. Wall. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, what he said is he's well, he doesn't really need a wall. It could be slats. slats. And then later today and he I lowered that. that. Today and he wait a minute. Today he lowered that a bit for a second and called it. Uh, he said he's going to put up just a white picket fence, and that will be very nice. Santa's cheating yeah. on Mrs. Claus with her yeah. much much slats. Slats. Hey, uh, uh, Luke is waving wire. goodbye. Bree is waving goodbye. In fact, why doesn't if, I want to thank I want to thank. Uh, 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 Vernon, of course, for calling, and Tony, and Jeff, and Phil, and Rob, and Brian, and Bree, and Chris, uh, Charlie, rather, uh, and Charlene, and Jason, and Josh, and of course, there he is, Santa. He's got an elf on his lap. Look at that. <laughs> Ke thanks, Kevin. Uh, oh, all, all of you, I'll, hopefully I'll see you after the first of the year. You know, I'm just, I just was depressed tonight. I'm sorry. It's the way it goes. Everybody, just wave goodbye, will you? Just be, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll wave back at you. See how easy that is? Let me uh, get uh, do something so I can get to my, yeah, there they go. That's uh, Merry Christmas, uh, everybody. A happy New Year. Uh, ha happy Passover. Well, that's over with. Uh, Kwanzaa's coming up. Uh, we just got a whole bunch of holidays for everybody. And then uh, we'll be off for, well, at least a week and a half or so is what we're going to be doing. Um, because we're going to go uh, uh, take uh, that time off and you get a long winter's nap and so on. And there'll be some programming in here, not live, but pre-recorded including uh, my life in the passing lane uh, in the week between Christmas and New Year's. Anyway, we'll see you on the uh, 2nd of January, 19, let's see, 2019. <laughs>
Hey, everybody. Thank you so much. Have a nice night. It's The Intersection next with uh, Jack Bishop. And we'll see you uh, January 2nd. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye. Bye-bye.